This horse just came in day before yesterday. He is a Tennessee walking horse. They shipped him in from Kentucky. So he had, I think about a 10 or 12 hour drive to get here. And he had a day to get used to being here. So he's, this is his second day here. The story behind him is that the people recently bought him off the internet. I believe they did see a video and went and picked him up in person. They didn't have him shipped. And they said the horse generally rides okay. They'd like to, they'd like to have a little neck rein on him. But they also said when they first sit down in the saddle, the horse takes off pretty quick. So I want to see if what I get is what they described. This is uh, the first time I've worked him. So I'm going to go ahead and get him saddled and work him a little bit. And we're going to see exactly what he seems like he is. He was turned out last night and he was turned out here. So he is familiar with this arena. I want him to stand still to be saddled. I could do it in the wash rack in there, but I wanted to do it out here since they said that he was quick to move off horse. I want to see if he's quick to move off like when I throw the saddle on him. You saw me a minute ago, I threw the pad up on him and he kind of got a little bit big eyed. See his head come up, a little bit big eyed. Really liking to be more relaxed when he's saddled. That's the kind of things I want to see in this evaluation of him. His feet are standing still, but he could stand to be a little bit more comfortable with what's going on around him. Let's put the saddle up there and see what he does. Not too bad. Saddle seems to fit him pretty decent. I have several different types of saddles that's built on different trees. And I have a saddle that fits most everything that comes in. Always exceptions though. I wanna make sure I don't scare him when I girth him up, when I pull the girth up. That looks like about the right length. Never tighten the saddle real tight all at one time. I'm going to get it tight enough so it don't fall off. And then I'm going to ask you to move his feet. I want to see how he walks off with the saddle on his back. That's tight enough. It's not going to fall off. Now let's just walk him off and see what he does. I want him to be out to the side in case he was to panic or buck or anything like that. He actually, about the second step, he exhales and relaxed pretty, pretty decent. Being a walking horse, he is built to carry his head up a little bit. So just because he has his head up doesn't necessarily mean he's tense. Good boy. His lips are fairly loose. Tighten another hole or two. I had a horse in a while back that was bought off a video that was nothing like what the video showed. But the, the owners of this horse have ridden him a few times since they bought him and said that he is pretty much what the video showed. I need to see for myself by observing things like saddling and I'm going to bridle him and that kind of thing. But I'm not going to back up and start from the beginning unless I see red flags. There's chewing right there. Unless I see red flags to tell me that something's not adding up. 
And so far, he seems to be exactly what I would have expected him to be. I'm going to put this shank bit on him because this should be a bit somewhat similar to what he's been ridden in in the past. If you're familiar with walking horses and how they're trained, he should be to the point of being in a shank bit by now. I'm basing that on what he's doing, what he's not doing, and how the horse should progress in training. Take my time, put it up between his lips, give him a chance to open his mouth. I don't stick my finger in their mouth immediately. I try to give them a chance to relax their mouth and then take the bit. There we go. And now I'll slide it over his ears. I'd rather him put his head down a little lower. But that position is typical for walking horses. When I work any horse, you want to try to work them at what the standard for their breed is. I don't want to try to make him be a quarter horse or make him be any other breed of horse. He is a walking horse and that's how he needs to be worked. That's how he needs to be ridden. Now, most of the time, most walking horses are trained to stack out, to rack, to uh, stack out to get down for you to get on from the ground. They said he is trained that way, but for this, for this time, I'm going to go ahead and use a step. The reason being is when a horse extends out for you to get on and lowers their body. And if they're not used to that, that first step picking you up can worry the horse. So I'm not going to ask him to do that this time. Might ask him to do that later. He's already walking off. He's expecting, expecting the go. What happens a lot of times with horses that walk off as soon as you get on their back, that's just what they're used to. They're used to as somebody's butt hits the saddle, they go. They're not used to waiting for the rider to say go. I suspect that's his situation. That's really pretty common. He does look pretty nervous, so there could be some nervous involved. He could have in the past been ridden with a, a poor fit in saddle. I don't know. The saddle fits him really nice. That shouldn't be a problem here. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of weight in the stirrup and see as soon as I put my foot up, he walked off. We're going to come back around and we'll do it again. This horse needs to stand. Let's go around again to let the rider get on. Every horse, it don't matter what breed, what you're going to do with it, that horse should be taught to be mount, mounted by a young rider that just hops up there or an older rider that might need a step and take a minute. Go around again. I suspect this horse was ridden mainly by a young person that just hopped up there and went. Don't think the horse is being manipulated. Uh, 
maliciously bad. I think he's just trying to do what he thinks he's supposed to do. Bring him back up here and let him settle. Let him stand. Good boy. You take one more step. Good boy. Good boy. I'm going to, look, as soon as my hand touched the side, he, it looks like he's got some worries about his side being touched. We're going to have to address that. I reached down and touched the side, and as soon as I did, he flinched. I stepped down and addressed that. One thing we definitely don't want is my foot touching him and him panicking at that. Let's do the other side. One thing I would say this horse may be a candidate for he could have some stomach ulcers going on there. That'd be a very good possibility. Probably going to suggest to the owner that they put him on some ulcer guard. If he doesn't have any ulcers, it isn't going to hurt him. If he does have ulcers, yeah, same flinch. If he does have ulcers, that's going to help a lot. Don't know what situation he was in before these owners bought him. Could have been that he did not have much roughage in his stomach and a stomach acid built up and caused some ulcers. That's pretty, pretty common, especially with the horse that's just a little bit underweight. Oh. If I can encourage him to stand. Come around again. If I thought this horse was being malicious as far as not wanting me to get on out of attitude, I'd be handling this different. In that case, I'd be lunging him, making him move his food. I don't think this horse is being malicious with that. I think he's just a little worried. Used to the routine of stepping on and going off fast. Good boy. Good boy. Let's walk off. This, the owner asked two things, primarily two things, that I work on with his horse. One is getting him to neck rein a little bit, and the other is getting him to walk off nicer when they mount. They said right now, as soon as they swing their leg over, he moves off pretty quick. So I'd like for him to wait for the owner to say go. And when he does go, walk off in a relaxed way. And I'm seeing from here, he's already worried before I even get in a saddle. Normally when you have an issue with a horse at a stage, like they said, he moves off fast when they get on. They're seeing, they're feeling that issue when they're in the saddle or when they're getting in the saddle and the horse is moving on. Normally, any problem with the horse starts before that. It starts when right now I'm standing on the mount block and he has anxiety, worried about me getting on. That's where the problem starts. 
It just reflects, if you don't notice it, it reflects a little bit later. Come around. Around me again. There we go. Oh, over here. Over here. See how he's keeping his body away from the step? He's worried about that. I'm going to work this until he isn't worried anymore. This way? There we go. Good boy. Good boy. We'll walk away and come back. So far, what I'm seeing with this horse, he doesn't seem like a bad horse at all. Seems like a pretty nice-minded horse. Doesn't seem like he is mean or bad or anything. It seems like he has a little worry, a little anxiety. That's easy to fix. I had a horse in a while back that was cold-backed. And if you saw those videos, I took a lot of time saddling him and a lot of time getting on him. And in a way, this is just like a cold back horse. He don't buck like that other horse did. But it's the same situation. It's the same reason. It's the anxiety about being ridden. I had a really interesting question not too long ago in my comments. Let me move my block over here. And it was related to the importance of not getting on a horse right away and getting on and off a bunch. Oop, walk away. And a horse is a prey animal. Their eyes are on the side of their head. I believe, um, there may be an exception, I believe most all prey animals, the eyes are on the side of the head, and I believe most all predators, the eyes are on the front of their head. We are a predator, they are prey. When we get on a horse's back, to the horse and to their natural instinct, that's like being attacked by a predator, like having a... a mountain lion or a cougar or something, jump on them to, to kill them and eat them. It's the same natural instinct as if we were to get on the horse's back. Go around again. So by allowing the horse to understand that we get on and off and it doesn't hurt, it's really important to that horse's development. That's why it's really important that you take your time. Don't get on the horse fast. Let him understand what's happening. Let him let that learning instinct override his training instinct. Or not let his learned in, his learned behavior override his instinctive behavior. That's what I meant to say. Letting us get on the horse is a learned behavior. Running away when they're attacked is an instinctive behavior. His instincts tell him that I'm a predator and he should run off and be scared, which in a way is a little bit of what's happening right here. That's a big part of what's happening when you hit the saddle and he goes off quick. That instinctive behavior was never trained out of him by teaching him to stand and wait and relax and walk off easy. So that's what I have to go back and fix with him. He's standing nice now. Look, his head is down a little bit. He's a little bit more relaxed. This is what this horse needs. He needs to understand that I'm not a predator and this is all okay. This is not going to hurt him. This horse is, uh, his name is Ruger. 
and I'll be doing some more videos of him to show you his progress. I'm going to stop with him for today. Let him understand that we got to that point. He stood, he relaxed, and everything was okay. It didn't hurt him. So until next time, thank you for watching.